hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. We've talked quite a bit about meiosis so far, about the idea of crossing over, where you have different types of chromosomes sharing parts or swapping parts of their actual chromosome. We also talked a bit about independent assortment, which is where you have random chromosomes going from the diploid number initially to the haploid number, and that being quite random. And we talked about how important it is when it comes to variation. But what we also need to focus on is actually how we make sure that this can happen, and that's DNA replication. So for example, with both meiosis and mitosis, we start with a parent cell. That parent cell will then divide and make daughter cells. In the case of mitosis, they'll make two identical daughter cells. And in the case of meiosis, they'll make four daughter cells that have the haploid number of chromosomes. So they're a bit different to the parent cell. But in each case, for that to happen, we need to double our DNA. And that happens at the DNA replication stage. Now, obviously, in the simplified version, all you would have is, you know, you have initially have one chromosome, and then DNA doubles, and then you have two chromosomes. Now that's true, that's actually how it happens, but the actual pro process behind it is also important. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to talk about the actual process of this DNA replication, where we double our number of chromosomes, we double the number of our DNA. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're also going to talk about significance. The point itself says describe the process of DNA replication and explain its significance. There's two parts to this dot point. Now first I'll go over the actual process. I'll describe the process of DNA replication. Now the first part, we've got something called DNA helicase. Now that ASE in the end should suggest that, that would be an enzyme. And it actually is an enzyme. And that first part of its word, helicase, comes from the helical structure of DNA. So you remember DNA itself is a double-stranded molecule and it has that helical structure, like that, this kind of structure. Now what DNA helicase does, as you can see here, it actually unwinds the helical structure. So it makes it from its helical structure into single strand structure. So it will go and unwind that whole helical structure. That's why it's called DNA helicase. So you can imagine this was beforehand and then what this enzyme dots, which I'll just draw in random color, it will cleave this open, and then you have these individual strands being exposed. Now that's going to be important for a second step. So first step is all about unwinding the DNA, unwinding the DNA, so going from that helical structure into the open structure, and you're unwinding DNA and opening the DNA. So the opening part refers to there being space where something else can attach to. Now there's space in between. These bonds have been broken between these two. There used to be hydrogen bonds between them here, but they've been broken. So that's what helicase does. It unwinds the DNA and it opens the bonds. So it breaks the bonds between the different nucleotides, bases. That's the first step. The second step is another enzyme. So again, we've got ASE at the end, so that will suggest it would be an enzyme. And it's called DNA polymerase. Now, poly comes from many. So what this does, it actually attaches different types of nuclei, nucleotides to these opened up DNA strands. All right, so here you can see here, we've got helicase, which opened up the structure. Now we have these two strands. And then these are your DNA polymerase. One will go in the direction of helicase, and one will go in the opposite direction. That's important, so they go in opposite directions. And what you can see is here we have these opened up. Here they were opened up. And what DNA polymerase does, it attaches these nucleotides to this opened up part of the strand to form a new strand. Right, so polymerase is an enzyme. It's basically like a worker. It makes sure we attach new nucleotides. And how is this worker? How is it possible? Well, remember, C and G always go together, and A and T 
T always go together. So in this case, if it's opened up, the actual enzyme knows what it should attach because that's a C, so it should, knows it has to attach a G there. And here, same thing, G here, so it knows it's supposed to attach a C. And that's how it can make a identical copy of the same strand, right? So you, you have your floating around, you have your nucleotides here. These are just floating around in the actual nucleus. What the enzyme does, it correctly attaches the right ones where it's meant to go. So it might grab this G and put it there. It might grab this C and put it there. And then it might grab this C and put it there, and so on and so forth until the whole strand has been copied. And I'm going to go over, in a second go over why that's important, but you can see it will just grab these nucleotides, is what it's doing, and then it's making a second strand, which is identical to the first one, or just a, a carbon copy. So it's just now it has made this strand, and it will do so all the way to the end. Right? So one will go into this direction, and the other one will do the same thing on the opposite direction. So this will also be copied. And what do you have in the end? So this was the DNA polymerase. Second step was attaching these bases and nucleotides to match up. And then what we have here is we have our replicated DNA. So you can see here, this was the original. Number one was the original. Then it spliced open. The helicase spliced this open. That's our second step. And then DNA polymerase attached these new bases on these spliced open strands. And then what we have is we have two strands. So here we have one strand, now we have two strands. So we have doubled our DNA. So DNA replication doubles our DNA, and this is the way it does it. And again, here this is meant to be our old strand, right? So these are our old ones we had originally. They were separated apart. And if DNA polymerase just takes a copy of this part, makes basically a identical copy of it and attaches it to this part. And the other one grabs code of this part and attaches it to this part. That's how we've gone from one strand to two strands. So this is the this is the new one, and this is the new one. Now we have two strands. It's called the semi. It's called semi-conservative replication. The reason why it's called semi-conservative replication is because the actual new strand has part of the old strand. So half of it is the old strand, and the other half is a newly replicated strand. Now this is basically the replication, the most important part you should know of the replication. I'll go over the parts again. First we've got an enzyme called DNA helicase. It will unwind the actual DNA. And it does that so we have freely exposed bases. The second part is we've got DNA polymerase, which is an enzyme again. And its job is to attach these nucleotides, which would be somewhere floating around the nucleus but not really doing anything. It will grab them and make an identical copy. So well, C will always bind with G, A always binds with T, so it knows what to attach based on those principles. That C always binds with G and A always with T. And one polymerase will go in the direction of helicase, and the other polymerase will go in the opposite direction. And what you have in the end, after all of this has been completed, is you have two sets of DNA. So we had one strand initially, and then we have two strands. And they're the same conservative replication, which means you have one half of the original of the new strand. So one half of the of the new strand came from the original DNA, and the other one is the copied version. But together they make a DNA molecule, and we have that happening twice. Overall, there's two DNA molecules. So this is this basically was this step, and I'm, I'm going to show you quickly an animation as well. And I'm going to go over the significance. So I'm going to quickly go an, over an animation, and then I'm going to go over the significance of it. So let's have a look at this quick animation of DNA replication. So first, we have DNA helicase, which unwinds the DNA. And then we have two separate strands. After that, we have DNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that will bind the complementary nucleotides, which will happen now. So you can see opposite strands. We have the 
random nucleotides attaching to form two new strands of DNA from that original DNA. And we'll grab those nucleotides from the surrounding areas. So now what we have is we have two new strands from that original one strand. So we have our template, and that helped us produce new strands. Now we have from one, we have two. That's how DNA replication happens in a nutshell. I hope that was useful. All right, so hopefully that animation was useful. But yeah, back to the significance. So we described the process and can quickly explain the significance. Without DNA replication, we wouldn't be able to produce our daughter cells. So in this case, we have mitosis. So mitosis happens in our body on a daily basis. This is how we replace our body cells. We go from one parent cell to two daughter cells. These are identical, so they have the same copies of DNA. And the only way we can make that happen is if we can actually replicate our DNA. We can't go from one parent to two daughter cells that are meant to be identical if we can't copy our DNA. And the same with meiosis. Meiosis, obviously, that's important to make sure we can give, we can pass our DNA to our offsprings. If we can't replicate our DNA, then we won't be able to produce out of one parent cell four daughter cells. So DNA replication is really important for both mitosis and meiosis. Without it, this wouldn't be able to happen. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.